Welcome to part two of the video series on how to set up a tie cord yard. In the first video, I very briefly described how to set up your spacing for your anchors. Um, the system that I use requires the anchors to be set in the ground as opposed to tied to a barrel. Uh, this diagram is going to be a little bit better for you here to explain it a little bit easier. Um, just to recap, this is for a six foot cord, and as such, each bird will have a 12 foot circle to itself, and then you figure an additional two and a half foot um, perimeter past that circle so that the birds can't physically reach each other if they stretch out past their cord. Um, this line here is your fence line. And I figured in the previous video I said you come in four feet and I just decided you know what to make it a little easier to figure out we're going to stick with this 17 foot cube because it's 12 plus two and a half and plus two and a half so it's 17 feet across by 17 feet across and in order to get your four foot perimeter from the fence you just come in a foot and a half both ways. Now your corner anchors and your anchors on your outside run this way and your outside line this way are going to determine the setup of your entire yard. So it's important that you get your measurements right or it'll throw it off. Um, so this first anchor will actually be 10 feet in off your fence line both directions. And then from there, as you can see here, it'll be 17 foot from anchor to anchor. So all you have to do measure 17 foot over to here, measure 10 foot up to the fence line, and you'll know where your second anchor is. Keep doing this going that way, and continue doing it this way. Go 17 foot by 10 foot, set your second anchor, third anchor, so on and so forth. Once you've established that, all you have to do is measure 17 foot this way, and 17 foot this way, and you'll be able to know where your anchor goes here. I'd really recommend setting up string lines and using flags or spray paint to mark it out. That way you can double check it. Now, let's say you're in a situation like me where you're setting it up in a grove of trees and your spacing is going to be a little bit different. Basically, you got to work with what your trees give you. And one of the things I'll caution you against is if you're sitting at say 15 16 feet and you've got small trees you're probably not going to want to put a barrel there because the bird will get wrapped around it but if you've got large mature trees or they're not going to work themselves all the way around and get hung up should be fine so case in point here let's say between these two trees i've got 20 feet i'm just going to mark it 10 foot on center and run my line down through this way now let's say this next set of trees is a little bit closer together, 15 foot. I'm going to go 7.5 on center here because the cord again is 6 foot. So you've, you've got about a foot and a half before that bird even reaches the tree and you'll be just fine. Now let's talk about positioning the anchor in relation to the barrel and any uh, low hanging limbs. So again, you've got your anchor in the center of your of your circle you're going six foot out now that also means that bird can go six foot high and I've found that if you've got barrels underneath the trees if there are low hanging branches even if a bird can't reach it it's gonna try to fly up there at night so I recommend trimming your trees back to at least eight foot off the ground just to avoid that now as far as the anchor and the barrel your barrels are, I think, 33 and a half inches tall, so just figure three foot, roughly. Um, you want your barrel positioned close enough to where the bird can fly up to it comfortably or fly inside of it comfortably and get bedded down for the night. You don't want it too close because a bird will wrap its cord around the backside, and I've actually lost young birds, you know, their first time on a cord where they'll get around, not realize that they have to walk the other way to get unstuck and they exhaust themselves and especially in the summer you'll lose them from the heat exhaustion. 
so that that takes care of the numbers part on that. I'm going to do another video uh, another day explaining things to consider such as shade, light, drainage, wind, and the elements. So stay tuned.